Deep in the heart of Atlanta is a hidden mansion, rich both in beauty and history. Perched atop a hill, the Swan House is surrounded by lush green woods and formal gardens, which shield from view the modern world outside. Built in 1928, the house was designed by Philip T. Schutze for Edward and Emily Inman. Edward Inman died three years after moving in, while Emily lived in the Swan House until her death in 1965. Shortly after, the Atlanta Historical Society purchased the home along with most of its original furnishings. It opened to the public in 1967 to be forever preserved as a museum. The Swan House features several architectural styles, taking cues from an assortment of eras and places, with its main source of inspiration coming from Italy and England. There are many rooms inside, and each room is beautifully decorated and filled with ornate objects ranging from 18th century antiques to 20th century amenities. The kitchen part of the house is a bit more modern, at least by 1920s or 30s standards. It is painted in a lovely jade green color, and its cupboards are filled with ornate china pieces, beautiful gold-covered goblets, and a wide array of vintage kitchen utensils. This house was nicknamed the Swan House because of the swan motifs that adorn the front doorway. Swans, however, are not the only fowl featured in this house. Each room seems to burst forth with flora and fauna and a decadent display of animal life. Be they hidden in the furniture, displayed in knickknacks, or featured in the hand-painted wallpaper.
As a big fan of Dark Academia, I can say without hesitation that the library was my favorite room in the house. There's something so cozy and satisfying about a wood-paneled library filled with history and books. On the second floor, we have the bedrooms, including the master suite, which incidentally has one of the most interesting and unique powder rooms I have ever seen. The third floor attic area was divided into separate apartments to house servants. And through one of the windows, you can just catch a glimpse of the rear gardens. Going down from the top of the house all the way down to the basement, you will see a full display of Schutz's personal antique collection. Like I mentioned before, Schütze designed this house and he was quite a passionate collector of antiques. In addition to his collection, you can see some of his original architectural sketches and tools. Quite frankly, I wish that they would make copies of his work and sell prints because I found his sketches to be so beautiful. I would have loved to have had some prints of his work.
Back outside, you will see quite a few places to rest and relax. The grounds of this estate are so extensive that if you do visit, I would highly recommend you bring good walking shoes, a lot of water, and brace yourself because we couldn't even cover all of the various trails and places to visit. I think we visited about half of the garden area before we moved on to our next destination. A short hike on one of the trails will lead you to the Smith Farm. Built in 1840 by Robert and Elizabeth Smith, it is one of Atlanta's oldest surviving farmhouses. In the late 60s, this house was moved from its original site to the Swan House estate to forever be preserved. Around the farmhouse, there is a variety of animals, including turkeys, chickens, and sheep.
In the main Atlanta History Center, there is a collection of different pieces from Atlanta and Georgia's history spread throughout the building. There is also a full restaurant and art gallery. However, the crown jewel of this building is located downstairs. In the lower level of the center stands a 132-year-old hand-painted work of art called a cyclorama. This cyclorama took five months to create, spanning 49 feet high by 358 feet long and weighing in at 10,000 pounds. The piece debuted in Minneapolis in 1886 and was at one time the largest oil painting in the world. Today, the painting is one of only two surviving cycloramas in the United States, making Atlanta home to one of America's largest historic treasures. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you would like to financially support me and my work, you can give a donation through my coffee page, which is linked at the end of this video and in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching.